Hi, and welcome to a demonstration which I've just been working on recently to produce a MIDI visualizer for use with Sonic Pi. Um, you may know that the um, development version of Sonic Pi, which I have running here, version 2.12, uh, Sam Aaron is currently working on implementing MIDI um, in this. Uh, the MIDI out is working reasonably well at the moment, and I've been working with this for some time. Uh, I thought it'd be nice to be able to visualize what's happening, so I'm making use of the um, language processing, which produces sketches which can uh, easily draw graphical output. And uh, there are libraries available to get um, MIDI information into processing. And so we end up with a sketch which is not particularly long. Um, that's the whole thing. And this is going to produce rather a nice output, which we can look at um, with using the uh, fact that we can fade out uh, Sonic Pi and we can have this as a background behind, as a visualizer. I'll start the um, sketch running, and at the moment it's just producing a black screen, which I've carefully sized to be the same size as Sonic Pi, which is running here. Um, you can see that we've got the Sonic Pi code in the window here. It's fairly simple. It's simply going to play the tune Sonic, uh, the tune Ferro Jaca, which I've coded in here. Um, with uh, an extra bars rest at the end of it and that's going to play the tune through once and underneath we've got the durations for the tune and um, we're going to play it reasonably fast using a use BPM command here. Um, this is just for uh, really for checking uh, printing the tune and the durations on the screen when we start this running. Uh, I've got four live loops which are identical uh, which are going to play the tune I use a MIDI con construct which uh, zips together the list containing the notes and the list containing the durations. And then these are simply going to be fed to a MIDI output command, which is going to play the note and is sustain it for a given length of time. And this first tune is going to be played and output to channel one, MIDI channel one. Um, eight beats later, um, after the first line is finished, we're going to start playing the tune again, this time outputting to channel 2, the third one to channel 3, and the last one to channel 4. I've set up um, the program Logic Pro to actually receive and play this MIDI information, but it's also going to be sent to the um, sketch, and so we'll be able to visualize what's happening. I'm going to start it running now and then immediately I'm going to reduce the transparency and uh, we'll see, in fact we might as well do that first now that you've had a look at the screen here. We'll reduce the transparency and we will now be able to see, we can turn off the preference setting there, get a bit more room and we'll start this running and here we have a performance of Frere Jaca visualized um, using a processing sketch. <laughs> You can see the graphs coming in for the four channels, channel one here, channel three coming in behind, channel three behind that, channel four at the bottom. It's quite a nice effect of what's going on. You can see the MIDI information being output here on the log, and you can see the, uh, the notes actually just scrolling across the uh, screen. And coming in at the right hand end, this should be reasonably synced with the note that you're actually hearing at any particular time. If you look at any particular part, particularly when you get the run of notes coming down, you should be able to visualize it, or a new part coming in after the bars rest. If I stop Sonic by playing, then you'll just get the last part of the notes scrolling off the screen on the left-hand side. No further notes playing. We can start the whole thing playing again and the sketch is still running and so it'll pick up the notes once more. Here we go. Part one, part two, part three, and part four. And so there we have a very nice system. Uh, it needs a bit more tweaking to make it uh, more versatile. You have at the moment have had to adjust the settings, the scalings to get the four channels to fit nicely, but in time you should be able to use a slightly more automated system 
and this should be able to handle up to 16 channels though obviously with reduced um, vertical scale in order to fit them in. Thank you very much for watching.